Hi everybody, Slippery Slope is here and this is Visual Basic tutorial number two. With this one we're going to create a new project and we're going to briefly go over controls because that's something you have to know to do anything in Visual Basic. Now there are a lot of ways that I can teach Visual Basic to you and it really depends on what series you're looking at, what class you're in. Uh, they, they would go over Visual Basic in a variety of different ways and I know some people like to essentially explain what all of this stuff means before they even teach you anything, such as all of uh, our uh, little buttons right here and everything on the menus. And and I, I just don't think that's the way to go about it. I'm going to make this you know, simple and logical so that you can follow along without any previous program experience. And I'm going to try to put everything in layman's terms, at least in the beginner series, so that you can follow along and create stuff and, and learn things and feel good about yourself. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new project. And you could click on New Project right here, or you can go to File and hit New Project. If we had a previous project we wanted to open, you could open Project or open one individual file of a project and or close it and exit, save all, uh, while I'm at it, save all means that you save all of the files within your project, but again, let's not go into too much nitty-gritty just yet. Let's create a new project. Yeah, so we're going to call our new project, and you also want to make sure that it's saved to a location that you're comfortable with. Mine's already going to my, uh, my jump drive here in my Visual Basic Tutorials folder, but you can call it whatever the heck you want to. Um, you want to enter a name for your project. Let's just call this exam, short for example, or perhaps example one. That's a better name because that better explains what exactly this file and this project is. Or what group of files to make up a project. Yeah, duh. Anyway, uh, we're going to stick with Windows Forms application. Now, the way you can think about this is whatever applications you're used to using on Windows, and if you don't have Windows and you're still watching this, hey, how you doing? Nice that you chose to stick along, but uh, this might not uh, be too fun for you. Because <laughs> this stuff is designed specifically for Windows. But Windows Forms application, essentially, most applications, all applications, they're made up of forms here on Windows. You ever just see a window that has a minus to minimize, couple of boxes to maximize and an X to close out. That's a form. This whole big box right here. You you could you could look at it, you could conceive it as one giant form. That's technically not a good way of describing it at all, but 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 theoretically just think of it that way. And and, and there you go. So without any more further ado, it's example one. So Windows Forms application, in case you're curious, console application, that's stuff that you enter a command prompt if you just want to type some stuff up. That's not what we're doing. Click OK once you have Windows Forms application and example one or whatever the name is of your thing. And here's form one. Makes sense, appropriately named because it's our first form. And of course the project can contain many forms. But we want to put stuff in this form so that we can get going. What's with this box right here to the left? It's the box that we need to use right now in order to make things cool. Unless you wanted to just change properties of this entire form right now, but let's not do that. Let's put stuff on this form to make it more useful. Well, right here under controls, uh, we could start doing that stuff. And what a control is, is it's an element. It's something that you put on your form for the sake of making your form livelier or you could put something that the user could interact with or the user doesn't even have to interact with. Essentially it's an element that you put on a form for the sake of enhancing your form. And that's a very layman's termsy definition, but it's one that we'll use for now. Let's put a button on. What's a button? Well, this probably looks familiar to you. You ever use an application, you see an OK, a clear, an exit, uh, abort, retry, fail perhaps, maybe, possibly. That's what this button thing is all about. It's something that the user can click on and stuff happens. So right now you just see button one right here on my screen and you might be thinking, what the hey, you know, what's that all about? Well, if I go to this properties window down here, 
and I type in OK, well, that probably looks familiar. It's an OK button. What did you just do, Slip? You're doing a lot of things at once, and I can't follow you. Well, it's simple, really. The toolbox window was already open. If it wasn't open, we could go to View up here, and then we could click Toolbox, or we could type in Control Alt and X, and from there, we can do one of two things. We could either drag a button onto the form, or we could double click any day now. There we go. And button two appeared all the way up top. I deleted it by having it highlighted and then pressing the delete key, and it went away. Once you have a button on the form, click on the button. Don't double click. Just click once. Go to this properties window, and if it if the properties window isn't there, go to view, and you can just go D D D D D D D and hit properties window, or you can hit F4 depending on the kind of keyboard you have. My keyboard's messed up, so if I hit F4, something different would probably happen. And looking at these properties here, there are a bunch of different ones. You, you could change color, you could change the actual name of the object, not the text the user sees, but the actual name of the thing. Uh, you can change the font, you could change the, the colors, you could put an image in there, whatever the heck you want to do. There's so many different things you can do, but all we did right now is we put in OK as the text, the text property of the button, of our button structure. The text is OK. A couple other things I want to show you before we move on and we end this video is, hmm, let's put in a label. What a label is, generally, is it's just a piece of information that the user generally doesn't interact with. It's, it's generally there for presentation so that you can use it to, say, define a button. For example, if I typed up OK button, which isn't really necessary because it obviously is an OK button, by typing in that for the text property of this label, well, it introduces the OK button. It says OK button, and there you go. One other thing. Hmm, we got a button, we got a label. What other control should I introduce you to? I really think I should show you one more. Nah, that's it for now. I don't want to spoil you. So anyway, that's our second video in the Visual Basic series. Uh, we're going to create... Whoop, there's a checked list box, and we're not even going to touch those for a while. <laughs> if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And next video, we're going to do a little bit of code. Slippery Slope signing out. Peace.